Seeing clearly. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite! First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. The beam and the note? No. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The beam and the coat? No. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I misheard you. The beam and the goat? The beam and the boat? Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. The beam and the moat. Uh, not that kind of moat. What do you mean, not that kind of moat? Let's try it now from the New American Standard Version. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. See, that really makes the parable come to life when instead of thinking about a beam and a moat, you're thinking about a log and a speck. The man with a giant log in his eye is trying to help someone else who has something else in his eye. But that something else is a speck. Pretty ridiculous, right? So when you think about the lesson here, this really is about the context. It's all about judging. It's about deciding. And the man with this log in his eye thinks that he's actually going to be able to help someone who's got a little tiny speck in his eye. He's not judging correctly. He's not making the proper decision. He's not thinking through clearly in his mind at all. The Bible has a name for someone who acts like this. Jesus has a name for someone who acts like this. He calls them hypocrites. And a hypocrite is a, well, it's pretty much a faker. It's an actor. It's someone who wears a mask. And Jesus says something very similar to the scribes and the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 23 at verse 24. He says, that they were blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. And so they tried to make sure that they were totally, totally pure under the law and they were really paying attention on things that didn't matter nearly as much as the bigger things that they needed to pay attention to that had to do with the heart. So they were trying to make sure that they weren't even sipping any tiny little gnat that might fall into their glass of wine, but they were actually swallowing an entire camel. Not really, but it's the same point that Jesus is making. It's definitely true that sin is sin in the eyes of God, but there are still things that are big deals in the eyes of God. 
sins with bigger consequences and that are seen as more serious in his sight compared to other things which are more like little issues. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about big log problems and little speck problems. In another, in another place, Jesus talks about these same kind of problems like camel problems. Those are big deal issues, big deal sins, and gnat issues, and little tiny gnat. It's kind of like the beam and the moat, or the log and the speck, the camel and the gnat. Big deal, serious sin problems, and then littler issues that people should not be obsessing about like they should be paying attention to the big problems. This is a great verse to help us understand. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whoever you are, that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, not of pride, but of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Hey, hey, Uncle Josh, how's it going over there? Yeah, 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 I'm really, uh, I'm really good. Yeah, glad you... Glad you enjoyed that bowl of cereal yesterday. Mm, that's so good. Um, you're so welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I was. Uh, uh, what do you? What do you have over there? Sorry, I was going to say something, but I got distracted by the speck in your eye. It's a speck. It's in your right eyeball, right at the the bottom, right where the lid is, like right there. It's like right there. You have a speck. And it's really distracting. Yeah, it's like I can barely concentrate on what you're saying right now because that speck in your eyeball at the bottom there is so distracting, I can't even see anything else. I know. Yeah. Uh, what's the matter? Are oh, you saying something about me? I'm distracting? You think I'm, dis I'm a distracting person and you've got the speck in your eyeball? <sighs> That's ri that's ridiculous. I don't need any help. No. No. No, thank you for thank you for asking though. Yeah, I'll see you at recess. Hey, thanks everybody for having me. And I hope you had some fun this morning and also learned something about um, these wonderful sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ that go into all different parts of scripture and give us so many lessons for our own lives. And with that, God bless and I hope to see you soon, maybe tomorrow, God willing.